I put this thing in a grafting tool, and I started putting those twigs on that apple tree. And so now I have an apple tree that has like 10 varieties of apples. Great. All right, so that's one of the benefits that you can uh, utilize grafting for is you can get all these different varieties in a small amount of space. Now, some of the other benefits of grafting, now, as a side note, people, I'm just going to tell you about grafting up here. But the table over there had a bunch of old uh, Tulare pear cuttings. And you can come over there and we can demonstrate together, hands on, and show each and every one of you guys how to do grafting so that you can go back to your house and do grafting. Um, I had a friend that showed me, hands on hand, how to do it. And from that moment on, I was hooked. So that's what we're doing here today. I'm telling you about grafting and then over here we can do it together. All right, so another benefit of grafting is if you want to change varieties in your yard, let's say you have a citrus tree, and in this area, that citrus tree got hit by one freeze, killed it all the way to the ground. Whenever that comes back up from the roots, it comes back as the root stock. You can't eat those oranges. But what you can do is you can graft to that to that root stock another amount of varieties, and you can change over that tree utilizing the roots that are already developed and put on to the top what you want. So that's one of the benefits. Another benefit of grafting is cross-pollinization. Some trees perform better if you have more than one variety in an area. Like if you buy a peach tree, and you well, you need to have two varieties that bloom at the same time so you get proper cross-pollination so that they, uh, they set fruit a little bit better. Now you could take two varieties and put on one tree and you don't have to plant another tree and utilize all that space. <clears throat> or males and females. Some fruits have a male tree, some have a female, and the female will not set fruit unless there is a male there to pollinate it. So you can take one twig, put on the male variety, and just let that one twig be your pollinizer that pollinizes the rest of your tree. So that's one of the benefits. All right, so another advantage of, of grafting is to take advantage of your root stocks. There are uh, organizations out there, that all they do is they research this root stock will do better in this area based on the nematodes, based on the drainage the drought, the cold hardiness, the summer heat. And so if you get, if you go to the store today and you buy a plant, a fruiting plant, more than likely it's on a root stock that is meant for that area. All my apple trees have M111 root stock. Whether you guys know that or not, if you go to the store today, more than likely whenever you buy your apple tree, it's on M111 root stock. M111 is supposed to be a well anchoring rootstock that does good in our area. Well, they say well anchoring, but they don't take into the fact that we get hurricanes here. During our last hurricane, one of our apple trees blew over on M111. Probably a 12 foot apple tree. Love this apple tree. Smith of Mississippi has performed wonderful. And it broke my heart to walk out there and see my apple tree laying on the ground. So I've been looking at taking advantage of another root stock that is well anchored. And what better way to get a strong root stock than a seedling variety? Now, when you plant a seed and that tap root goes straight down in the dirt, when you buy the M111 root stock, it kind of goes a couple of feet deep, but they go wide. So that's why they say they're well anchoring. We need deep here. So, seedling rootstock, you get a full-size tree root system. But I don't really want a full-size tree in my, in my apple orchard, or my orchard taking up all that space. There's another thing I'm going to talk to you about. It's called inner stem grafting. We'll get into that in a minute. But just keep that in the back of your mind, inner stem grafting. All right, another advantage of grafting. 
you have all these experimental stations that are constantly developing new varieties out there. When you plant a seed from a cross uh, pollinized uh, apple, it's going to take 7 to 12 years for that apple to get up, set its fruit, and so you can judge whether or not that's a good apple or not. That's, that's not expedient time frames when you're a scientist and you're developing fruit. So when they plant that one seed, they grow it up for a year. Then you can cut that seed, take that scion, and you put it on an already established tree that's 10 years old. The next year, that will fruit. So you can go ahead and speed up the game. So the experimental stations are doing this. They're planting out all these seeds. They're snapping them. They're, gra they're uh, sipping them off. They're grafting them onto mature trees. Boom, they have a full-size fruiting uh, plant, and they know what's, what that's all about right there. So that's another advantage of grafting. All right, let's talk about interstem grafting. I just mentioned that earlier. M111 is supposed to be your well-anchoring rootstock that gives you a semi-dwarf tree, 10 to 12 foot tall. That's a good-sized tree, but it's not a full-size 30 foot tree. They have another one out there called Bud 9. Bud 9 is another one that gets about up to 10 foot tall. It's not well anchoring. You have to stake this or the wind will blow it over a gentle breeze. But it produces a, a huge amount of fruit. It produces a large size fruit. So that's why they like to use Bud 9. Now if I plant my seedling and I don't want a 30 foot tree, but I want to be able to put my, my shell apple onto that seedling. And what am I going to do to keep it from getting 30 foot tall? Inner stem grafting. So if I take Bud 9 or M111 and I cut an 8 to 10 inch section out of that and I put that on the seedling and then graft on the top of that my fruiting variety, now all of a sudden I have a full size root system but a dwarfed down tree that is the same size as the rest of my orchard. And I learned about that a few days ago, and I was like, psh, blew my mind. I was like, what? I was like, Michelle, listen to this. And I told her about it. She's like, uh-huh, what are we doing today? <laughs> so uh, that's, that's what inner stem grafting will do for you. And we're going to do some of that at our house this year. I've already ordered seedling root, root stock to breed out some apples. And uh, we're going to put some inner stems in there, and we're going to do that in our orchard. All right, another thing that you could do with grafting is perpetuate clones. Now, whenever you plant a seed from a shell apple, you're not going to get a shell apple, even if it was pollinated with another shell apple. You're going to get some other variation. So how do we keep a shell apple? Well, there was only ever one shell apple. Like, there was only ever one red delicious, one gala. There was only one ever planted. There was not two or three seeds, and they, and they, put, they uh, made clones off of that. They took that one, they liked it, they cut it, and they made cuttings off of it, and then they grafted it onto multiple root sites, they grew those out, and then they multiplied it, and they got, got that out to the market in about two or three years. You have tens of thousands, of hundred thousands of trees. Another benefit of grafting is, um, with clones, is I like to do air layers. And whenever you multiply your fig trees, you can wrap a ball of soil around a limb off of a fig tree inside a plastic bag. In about six weeks, you'll have roots. Snip that off and you have a tree. Well, you can't do that with a lot of varieties of plants out there. So you have to come along, snip that off, and you have to graft that onto a root system somewhere in order to propagate out those trees. You can't air layer, you can't always set roots off of a tree limb like you can with air layering of some of these other easier varieties. Now, have anybody ever seen a weeping type of a, a tree? Like a weeping uh, a maple? Like a Japanese maple? You can't you can't um, you can't air layer those. You can't get those on their own root systems. They just won't do well. If you did uh, get roots to grow off of that, all of your Japanese maples are grafted onto root systems. 
Another benefit of rafting is, let's say that you're out weed eating one day and you hit your fruit tree and you grow the bark all around it. If you grow on that bark, that tree is more than likely going to die. If not, you've just really hindered the uh, production of that fruit tree. Now you could come along and you can do um, a grafting right beside that. You get a little seedling, plant that seed like a couple inches, maybe up to a foot away, let it start to establish, bend that tree over, graft it into your fruit tree, and now you have bridge gapped that tree. That tree now has three root systems. So you've uh, provided a sturdy alternative to the root system that it's on and you've re-established nutrient flow to the canopy. And I think that's something that I'm going to try even if I grow on my own trees. I think that's, that would just look neat. I think that's something that I want to do is uh, do some bridge grafting. Wind to graft. All right. In the middle of summertime here, we're wrapping up summer, is not the time to graft. But I went down the rabbit hole of doing a, a lot of studying to prepare for this uh, speech, and I've learned a lot of stuff. Now, typically, at the end of summer, you can still do some bud and chip grafting, where you take a little leaf node off of, off of your plant material, and you plant that, on, or you plant, and then you graft that onto your other trees, and that's what you do in the middle of summer. That's how you propagate out. And then you can come along and, top and cut off the top of that if you wanted to uh, change over a tree to just that. But typically most of your grafting is done in the winter and in the early spring. In the winter time, for here, about January, you want to go out and you harvest your scion wood. When your trees are dormant, they don't have any leaves on them, the buds aren't swelling, and uh, nothing is going on in the orchard go out and select your first year growth that just grew the last couple months ago select that that new growth about pencil size big around you don't really want to use wood that's any bigger than a pencil size to graft with um, just that's not good but in the early spring if you look outside and you notice that um, the buds are starting to, to swell in your trees and it's about to leap out you know the, the sap is flowing in that tree. That is the best time to go out and start doing your grafting. You already have that, that nutrient that's starting to flow up and cause that new growth. Take your scion wood out of the freezer, or out of the refrigerator, not freezer. Do not freeze your scion wood, people. <laughs> but when you go out in December and you harvest your scion wood, if you put that into a Ziploc freezer bag, put that in the crisper of your drawer, label it, date it and it's there when you're ready to start grafting. Now when your buds start to swell, sap's falling, pull those scion woods out of the refrigerator and start heading out to your orchard. And uh, that's when you want to start doing your grafting. That's the that's the proper time of the year. Alright, so tools. What what tools do we need to start doing grafting? The very first time I ever did any grafting and I went over to my friend's house, and he's a professional grafter, he does this for a living. He just pulled out his pocket knife, and he cut off a, 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 a place onto one of his rootstock plants. He reached over in his refrigerator, he pulled out his scion sticks, and he goes, here, Randall. And he handed me his pocket knife, and he handed me the scion. He goes, now, let's, I'm going to teach you how to graft today. Let's go graft. And we walked out to his fig tree. I sliced. He says, now do this, and I made the tongue on there. He you know, showed me how to, how to, he stood there with me, but he made me do it, and he did the grafting, or he showed me how to do the grafting. And uh, that was the game changer for me. At that moment, I knew that this is something that I could do. But I didn't know how confident I would be, so just like all, the, all everybody else in this world, I like toys, right? So I went on Amazon. And I bought one of these little handy dandy grafting tools. Have you ever seen those little grafting tools? Makes them a little mega shape cut on there for you. And I'll tell you what, for a new grafter, I do recommend grab one of those tools. I got one over here on the, on the desk if you guys want to come by and I'll help you with do some grafting. You can get a little 
practice with that, but you're not going to do a lot of grafting with that because you're going to dull the grain really quick. Those aren't made for production grafting. That will break your you being scared of grafting. I did about 10 grafts with that grafting tool, and I thought, I don't need this. It's slowing me down. I pulled out the old pocket knife, and I started doing cleft grafts on all my apple trees. So I grabbed one of those grafting tools. I went out, and I did it. I broke my fear. I picked up the grafting knife, and I went to grafting. So what essentially did I have to have? I had to have a pocket knife to do my cuts with. I had bought paraffin film tape to wrap around my scion wood and where I made the graft it to prevent moisture loss. And then I bought rubber bands to wrap that rubber band around that graft you that I just made to hold it tight. That was really the only thing that you need to do grafting. And I got all those materials over here today, so you can come by and get your hands on and uh, check all that out. And some people use flagging tape. Now the old guy that uh, that showed me how to do grafting, he did it with flagging tape. As a professional grafter, he grafts thousands of trees a day. He had a roll of uh, flagging tape around his neck. And he would just pull it off and he would go and he wouldn't slow down. And he'd have a graft done in about 10 seconds. It was amazing to watch. Now if you get into some big grafts, like you want to change over your one of your fruit trees, in your orchard and you have a well-established stem on one of your trees, you do a, a cleft graft or you can do a bark graft, but you're going to need to seal up that big wound. You're not going to do that with paraffin tape. You're going to have to have a grafting wax or grafting paint. So you got to be able to, to seal that wound up so you don't have moisture loss there. So you're going to need to grab grafting wax if you want to do something like that. All right, so the different types of grafts, and like I said, we're going to get our hands on over here, and I'm going to demonstrate the different types of grafts. Cleft graft is probably the only thing that I really ever do in my orchard. You just snap the limb off, you take your scion wood, and you sharpen it down to an uh, inch, inch and a half, uh, to a point. You split that stick right down the middle. You put your scion wood in there, make sure your cambium layers line up. When I say cambium, cambium is your green growing inner bark that's in a, in a tree limb. If you don't line those green pieces up, that cambium up, your graft will fail and it won't grow. So that is the most important thing to know about grafting is you have to line up at least one side of your graft union to the, to the cambium layer. And whenever you do a graft, do it only with three or four buds on your scion wood. You don't really want a, a big long limb that has like 10 buds, because that's really pulling a lot of nutrition. You want to focus on healing that graft union and then letting two or three buds take off and form your branch or form your new tree. Grafting combines the science with the art of horticulture. Science aspects include the compatibility, timing, disease, insect resistance, drought tolerance, and hardiness with the skill of grafting, grafting, and grafting takes hours of patience. It only takes a second to pick up a knife and sit down and practice doing a graft union, but it takes hours to patiently try all the different varieties for all the different ways and in all the different trees. All right, thank you very much.